Hello everybody, this is General Snivy and welcome back to more of the Star Fox 64 3D playthrough. Today is more than likely going to be the final session of this game. <laughs> yeah, this game didn't last very long. Well, granted, the original was not very long either, but hey, I'm just saying. Anyway, let's go ahead and get things started. There's only like one path left to show off in the main game, and then finally after that's done, I'll be showing off the battle mode as well as the training mode. And believe it or not, training mode has changed quite a bit compared to the original game. And again, I will be showing this off when we finish the main game and I finish showing off the multiplayer, or at least to the best of my capabilities, so... Here we go. Let's go and start a new game right now. Once again, we will be using the uh, original N64 control scheme because I'm old school like that. <laughs> Plus, I prefer N64 controls anyway, so it's not like that really matters. So, with that in mind, let's begin. Let's head into corner area. Again. It's about time you showed up, Fox. You're the oh, thank God you can skip those uh, introductory cutscenes. And even cutscenes like them. <laughs> it's not like it really matters all that much in the end anyway. I mean, sure, we've seen them all before. And you can watch them again if you want, just for fun. But... Not a bad shot. I can never manage to shoot down all of them in one fell shot. <laughs> Perhaps I'm just a bit too impatient. I just gotta wait a little bit longer. Anyway, uh, what am I to talk about today? Well, I mentioned before that I am looking into possibly purchasing an SSD for my computer. And I am still going to be doing that. Everybody However, over the past week, I've noticed that the price for some of the SSDs I'm looking at, like the Crucial and also Samsung, the prices have jumped on those uh, SSDs quite significantly for whatever reason. So, for right now, I'm kind of uh, waiting a little bit. But in the meantime, while I'm waiting for the prices of those particular SSDs to drop, I am looking into other options, or more or less other SSDs. And one that really has... The, yeah. the one that I really have my eyes on right now is one from uh, Western Digital. Yeah, you got Falco. <laughs> Too close. By the way, you do need Falco alive for this section. Otherwise, the, otherwise you will not be able to take the alternate path that's available for this mission, and you'll not be able to accomplish it, even if you perform this next task 100% flawlessly. Fox. So, what you have to do is just fly through the undersides of these structures here and fly through them all. And again, you have to keep Falco alive, otherwise you won't be able to pursue him as he's flying to the waterfall. In the original game, it was just a flat texture, but here, <laughs> essentially the same, but... It's still the same, but uh, it does have a little more detail. I still wonder why is it that we were able to just simply fly through it. Gotcha. It's just weird. Game physics can be weird sometimes, folks. Any night. <laughs> Alright. Ah, someone wants to play. Incoming enemy from the rear. Drop altitude. How about I do a somersault instead? <laughs> I love doing that. Enemy shield analyzed. Say hello to the attack carrier. This guy looks kind of familiar. 
Also, the dialogue for this fight was changed for the bet. Instead of uh, saying charge like he does now, he originally said, DEPLOY ALL UNITS CHARGE! I don't know why they changed the dialogue for this fight. Perhaps the reason is because he's not really deploying units, he's more so shooting missiles. And so they changed it to make more sense, but again, really? So overall, pretty easy fight. Also, hello Morgan Shawaria, welcome to the stream. Um, no, I have not gotten a Sonic Mania DLC yet, but I plan on doing so sometime soon. Maybe after today's stream. You did it! I was worried for a moment. Mm. I don't know why, I'm having some pain in my freaking knuckles right now. <laughs> Maybe it's a sign telling me, hey, buy the damn DLC for Sonic Mania. <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, mission accomplished. Mission accomplished, let's move on to the next mission. Which, regardless if you accomplish the mission or complete the mission, or no, if you accomplish the mission, you will be heading into Sector Y. You could also change your mind and head to the next course, the other course, which is Metro, if you really want to, but that's entirely up to you. Also, I have confirmed that if you do choose to replay a mission, you do lose a life like the original. However, unlike the original, if you do select the replay the previous mission, it's not like a one and done deal like the original. Instead, it'll just give you a pop-up warning saying you will lose one ship to restart the previous mission. And you can choose to cancel if you would want to do so. So, with that in mind, let's head into Sector Y. <laughs> My god, this place looks way different than it does in the original. Instead of having a greenish, yellowish glow, instead this time has more of a red and blue kind of glow this time around. Not sure what it is, but hey, I like it. I like the aesthetic change. It honestly looks nicer. Alright, let's head on in. Fox, we're under attack. Help us out here. I'm on my way. Good luck. Welcome to Sector Y Combat Zone. Within this place, we have to back up the, back up the, the Cornarian Squadron as they're taking on Andross's surprisingly powerful Elite Forces. This place, you'll find lots of mechanized robots ready to shoot you down. So what the hell is this, Gundam Wing? <laughs> Not that I really watched this anime or anything. Also, dialogue was changed there. Dialogue was changed from uh, something's wrong, I don't see anything to what you just heard. Surprise, Not sure why uh, some scenes have their dialogue changed completely and the uh, other ones not so much. <laughs> you can get, go either up or down within this section and uh, there's not really much a difference as far as enemy forces are concerned. It's more of a personal preference kind of thing. and. Unlike the original, where uh, where you don't have a lot of height to work with on the top path, I believe on the 3DS remake you do have some additional height. By the way, in this mission, in order to accomplish the mission goal, you have to shoot down 100 targets worth of uh, enemies. So in other words, you have to get at least 100 points or more. Otherwise, the mission will result in a mission complete. So no need to worry about uh, having to take certain paths in order to get to your goal. I'll take care of everything below. Okay, there you go. <laughs> uh -huh. you could hide from 
So anyway, there are two possible paths that you could have taken back there in the previous junction. The top path, in my opinion, offers is a lot easier to get through as opposed to the lower path. The lower path has more uh, mechanized Gundam soldiers, if anything else. And each of those soldiers are incredibly fast. Also, throughout the mission, depending on what your hit counter is and what score you have, you will get comments from either Peppy or Falco. If you're on a good pace and are doing really well in the mission, then in two instances, either Peppy or Falco will comment on your progress. If you're not doing so hot, Falco will come in and say, Is that the best thing? Is that the best you can do? Or something to that extent. Location confirmed. Sending supplies. God damn it. Missed the dang uh, power up thing. Something's up ahead. Whatever. Looks different. <laughs> uh, Dr. <Always> Petra. <laughs> uh, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> anyway, say hello to the boss of this level. There's technically uh, three of them. We fight two of them right now, and again, these suckers are fast. They're fast, they have high evasion, and they can be pretty dang devastating. I mean, seriously, look at how fast they freaking move. Granted, I just completely murdered that guy, and that one, but whatever. <laughs> Party just yet. Say hello to the third and final mechanized robot, the Shogun. It's time to try a new weapon. Why does he sound like one of those stereotypical Italian crime bosses? It's like, yeah, I'm cool. Shoot, I'll take oh, shit. Ducky little <laughs> I'm coming for you. Anyway, in this boss fight, your radar is your friend. It is your best friend. Love it, cherish it, use it, and abuse it. <laughs> Trust me, it's the best uh, thing that you can use to keep track of the bosses. Again, the bosses themselves are very fast, evasive, and can be really devastating. Other than that, though, they're pretty easy. have improved, Fox! I guess you're good for something. Indeed, even though you're just about dead. <laughs> oh, all because I accidentally shot him a couple of times. <laughs> but, yeah. Sector Y is a pretty easy level, considering the fact that it is on the hard path. And this level I find easier to complete whether you accomplish the mission or not to get to the normal path which is uh down below it's uh known as katina so honestly if you want to get to katina more easily if you're not uh the best when it comes to those uh light speed rings in the asteroid field just uh Simply go to Sector Y instead, complete that mission, and then head to Katina that way. Either way, um, that's uh, Sector Y for you. Pretty easy. Now we're heading into a pretty dang difficult level now, so say hello to Level Spikes, everyone. We're heading for Aquas. Star Fox! I want you to take out the enemy bioweapon. Yes, sir. Deploy the blue marine. Good luck.
Welcome, everyone, to Aquas, the Aquas Ocean. And since the Blue Marine is a new machine, kind of, it has uh, unlimited uh, ammunition when it comes to torpedoes. And unlike the R-Wing and Landmaster, laser shots cannot be charged. So at least the game in this remake tells you that. So there's no uh, laser lock on this time around. I'm gonna check out the bioweapon. So when it comes to uh, the Blue Marine, this is the only time in the entire game that the Blue Marine is even used, ever. Funny enough, this vehicle never even made a reappearance in any of the more recent Star Fox games. Even Star Fox Zero, where, uh, <laughs> talk about a missed opportunity when it comes to the thing. So just like with the Landmaster before it, it, uh, it is all on rails. But the benefits of the Blue Marine is that the level itself, the you despite the fact that it is being uh, kind of, it is kind of difficult, to help you see. it does have the added benefits of locking on the targets more the easily side. with the power of the torpedo, even if it's already fired out. Uh -huh. Even if you fire out a torpedo already, you can still lock onto a target before uh, it detonates. So pretty easy to do. When it comes to the power of the torpedoes, uh, they're still nowhere near as powerful as say the bomb, the Nova bombs, but at the very least the torpedoes themselves are unlimited. I am a fan of this level, though, despite the fact that it can be a really difficult time. It's still a really fun level to go through, and I wish there were more levels like this, to be honest with you. At least maybe one more Blue Marine level. If the Landmaster can have two levels in this game, why can't the Blue Marine have two levels? <laughs> I don't get it. Uh, whatever. Anyway, if you're... Trying to take out multiple targets and get a high score in this mission, since you can't charge your laser and uh, execute a charge shot with your primary lasers, you will instead have to rely on the power of the torpedoes to just simply lock onto your targets and fire. As far as the remake's uh, music is concerned, um, in my honest opinion, it's not as good as the original, but still pretty dang good. Not as good as the original, but still something. Just like with the Landmaster, it also has the ability to break as well as charge, or boost forward. As far as uh, braking is concerned, when the Blue Marine breaks, it you literally just stops. It stops on the... not necessarily on a dime, but might as well be. By the way, those starfish... those starfish are evil. Shoot them with a torpedo. Shoot them before they explode, otherwise their explosive blast radius will kill you. Or it'll hurt you significantly. Trust me, it hurts a lot. Another very annoying thing when it comes to this section in particular is the fact that you also have to deal with falling rocks. Ow. It also doesn't help with the fact that this place is quite dark and difficult to see. But, as uh, your teammates have mentioned before, you can use the power of the torpedoes to help you see in light of the darkness that's ahead of you, and it can be used as like a decent flashlight. Alright, say hello to the bioweapon. A giant clam. The bioweapon Bakun. Enemy shield I'm pretty sure it is pronounced Bakun. Otherwise, it would sound like bacon. So anyway, in this fight, what you want to do is... 
not necessarily a, um, worry so much about damaging the top of the shell and destroying these things. It helps, yes, and that is like one of your primary targets. But once the shell starts opening up, use your lasers to fire. Attack the clans, uh, support the uh, thingamajigs. I don't even know what those things are, but either way, they're there. Shoot them with the laser until they turn into a rainbow, then fire a homing torpedo at it. Destroy both of those things and start going for the eye! As this fight goes on, it will get more and more difficult. But again, just keep uh, firing your primary weapon and eventually... Eventually the boss will go down. Again, it just uh, takes quite a bit of time and uh, there's a lot of things that uh, can end up blocking uh, Torpedo, including those uh, pearls that the bioweapon fires at you. But, again, uh, they're not really that bad to deal with. Not bad at all. We're preparing to dock. There we go. Mission complete. Mission accomplished, folks. <laughs> Thanks, Slip. Blue Marine came through. Slip is not such a screw up after all. Thanks a lot, Peppy. I'll take the sky any day. Sheesh, Falco. You too. <sighs> there we go, folks. That's the end of Aquas. Again, pretty dang good mission. A fun mission, and I wish there was another one like this, but sadly there's not. <laughs> uh, wish we could use the Blue Marine a little more often than we currently can, but, oh well, not exactly a game developer here. Whatever. That's fine. All right, time to move on to the next stage. Again, this one's a pretty easy stage considering the fact that it is on the hard path, but it can still be a little bit difficult, but not that bad overall. So let's head off to the next mission, Zonus. There's an enemy base there. Affirmative, General. Welcome to the world of Zonas, the toxic waste area. Let's sneak in low and surprise him. This is Zonas? Yes. This is Zonus. I can't believe they did this. Me neither. <laughs> what a dump. Hmm. It definitely looks more like a dump in this version of the game as opposed to the original, which honestly doesn't look that bad. Anyway, the main mechanic and gimmick of this mission is that there are these searchlights hanging around the bout. You need to shoot and take out all searchlights in order to accomplish the mission. However, if you uh, miss a searchlight at all at any point, you're, you and your team will be spotted and the mission will only be able to be completed, not so much accomplished. This is really starting to tick me off. Some of the searchlights on this, in this mission can be pretty difficult to hit. Closing in on them, Falco. Oh, hello. Reinforcements. Take the right light, boy. I have the left. Cat, what are you doing here? Is that any way to greet a girl? <laughs> anyway, uh, Cat will show up uh, periodically throughout the mission to help you out. So that's awesome. 
Apparently, uh, Falco and Cat have a relationship of some kind. Also, what the hell is this thing? <laughs> well, whatever it is, I don't like the looks of it. It looks kind of nasty. Ow. Crap. Oh, this is gonna be a dick. I've got somebody on my tail. Beautiful. I could kiss you for that. <laughs> there you go, Cat. Thankfully, Cat does have unlimited health, unlike your teammates who actually do have limited health. Also, throughout this mission, you will encounter uh, certain gates which you need to uh, either shoot from the top or the bottom to raise or lower the gate. Either method works, unlike the original, which you had to shoot them from uh, one particular spot in order to raise them the right way. Which, again, thank freaking God. Because that was annoying in the original Star Fox. Thanks, Pep. <laughs> I kind of saw it behind me. Thank God for being a third person. So overall, I feel like this mission is a really dang fun mission, but there are a lot of targets in which you need to shoot and take down. Also, this mission, unlike the original, which was kind of bright, it can be pretty dang dark. This is a pretty dark looking, uh, dark and depressing looking environment, as to be expected from a toxic waste stuff. But hey. I have... Whoa, okay. <laughs> One thing that's worth noting is that uh, it is possible to end up being uh, forced underwater. If that happens, the game will uh, force you back to the surface after a short period of time. Speaking of which, if you tap on the water surface, you'll bounce pretty high into the air. Because bloody science. You're telling me. <laughs> and indeed, these things are a trap. What the heck is coming from the sea? <laughs> Hello. The Salamarine. I guess. Anyway, this boss fight is a unique boss fight, as this one... This one cannot be damaged by your normal lasers. Instead, what you need to do is fire Nova Bombs at it. And you also need to be sure to damage the right spots before proceeding. If you don't, well then... <laughs> well then, the other parts end up repairing themselves. And again, you need to damage the right parts in the right order. Once again, you do need Nova Bombs. Otherwise, there's no way you'll be able to damage the boss at all. Thankfully, the boss, despite it requiring Nova Bombs in order to destroy... <laughs> I think that dialogue is exclusive to the 3DS remake. I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure that is exclusive to this version of the game. As you're going through this fight, you're going to be spewing uh, Nova Bombs like mad. As for the final part right here, once you take out the second major arm piece, this is when you can start damaging the enemy boss with lasers. And there we, there we go. He's dead. <laughs> Overall, a pretty damn easy fight considering the fact that Zonus itself can be a pretty difficult feat to get through. I'm having some trouble here. Where'd you go? Hmm. Who knows? 
Wow. Gain some like two extra lives out of that. That is freaking sweet. <laughs> um, I don't think I've mentioned this yet, but for every 100 hits that you manage to score throughout the entirety of your uh, main game playthrough, you will get an extra life. And trust me, extra lives are extremely useful, especially for a game like this. Alright, now that that's done, Cat somehow went missing, and so... Now it's time for the next mission, Sector Z. You could also uh, head to uh, Macbeth from here if you want to uh, bypass Sector Z. And honestly, that may not be such a bad idea, but uh, again, I want to show off Sector Z. This gives me the opportunity to show off all the levels in the game, so why the heck not? So here we go. Sector Z, here we come. The enemy army is gunning for you. Be careful. Don't worry, sir. Remark. Enemy approaching from the left. We'll gladly take this one. Welcome to Sector Z Combat Zone. This is the Ambush of the Great nice. Fox mission. Welcome. This is a Great Fox defense mission in which you could technically kind of fail at, but in actuality, not so much. Also, fun fact, if you uh, skip the initial uh, opening cutscene, Instead of starting at the front of Great Fox, you will be starting at the left-hand side of Great Fox in the western sector. So, it can be beneficial to manipulate your spawn and spawn on the left-hand side of Great Fox so that way you can uh, get the enemies more quickly. But personally, uh, I, feel, I find it more cinematic to start where you are originally starting at, which is the front of Great Fox, which Look, makes sense. Get this guy off me. There is one thing I kind of don't like about the 3DS, this and that's really just, just for 3DS games off. in general, is that the analog stick is pretty, oh, pretty easy to slip off. off. Uh-oh, we got problems. Copperheads! Six missiles coming from the left. Missile one is heading for Great Fox. Here it comes! Alright, so here's the annoying mechanic in this mission. This mission has, has six missiles that will be coming in throughout the course of the mission. If even one of those missiles hit Great Fox, then the mission results in the mission complete. So, yeah. What's even more of an insult and a slap in the face is that uh, once you get a mission complete and you choose to move on and not replay the mission instead, then the Great Fox damage that it receives in this mission those are those are stuck now. and they will remain for the remainder of the playthrough it's not like it forever per se just until you start a new game again but I'm just saying god damn it one missile down thanks Falco oh, no! Oh my. Are you gonna hug all the fun? Cat, can't you go bother someone else? Let me help you out. Sounds good. I could use all the help I can get, especially considering the fact that the somersaults are kind of, uh... <laughs> they're kind of going nuts. Shoot, they got me! Your father helped me 
Whew. Sorry about that, Peppy. Uh oh. Here are the last six missiles. Indeed. You also have to consider the fact that the uh, enemies are going to be constantly trying to swarm you as you're trying to shoot down these dang missiles. Another very annoying thing about these missiles. <laughs> okay, never mind. Missiles aren't too bad. You just have to be at the right distance and start shooting the crap out of them. Afterwards, they go down pretty easy. You owe me, Falco. You're on your own. Good luck, little man. You too, Cat. Thanks for the hand. Definitely needed your assistance. Rob, is everything okay? Great Fox is okay. That was a close call. Not really. We've got the bad guys on the run. Mm -hmm. You're telling me. Don't worry, Slippy's here. Alright, uh, here we go. Mission completed. Got 75 hits. Honestly, that's not too bad. I think if you want to get a medal for this mission, you have to score at least 100 points. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that is the score requirement. And it seems to me that the um, score requirement for that mission is pretty damn difficult to achieve. Especially considering the fact that you also have to keep in mind that the missiles are just flying at Great Fox constantly. Ready to destroy it by any means necessary. But anyway, after you accomplish the mission, you'll be given the opportunity to head into Area 6. Otherwise, if you fail the mission or get a mission complete, then you will be forced to head into Bulls. Or you can replay the mission and try again if you have enough, if you happen to have any spare lives on hand. But anyway, let's head into Area 6. The last major stronghold before Venom. It's almost over. We're in your debt. Come back in one piece, Fox. Will do, General. Remark. Cayman here. No problems. Do you copy? Emergency maneuvers! Too late. Game over, pal. <laughs> Game over, yeah. Welcome to Area 6 Defense anyway, Station. Venom Air Defense Zone. Everybody stay alert. Space mines ahead. Indeed. Man, these space mines suck. Especially considering the fact that they have a problem with draw distance. <laughs> anyway, Area 6 is the most difficult mission in the entire game to complete. Although, for the 3DS remake, it does have some really kick-ass uh, remixed music of Area 6. <laughs> Honestly, I like this more than the original version of the song, but still, just saying. That's just my personal opinion. Your opinion may differ from me, and that's totally fine. Also, throughout the entirety of this mission, or throughout certain points, the Great Box, you can uh, have it come in and help you out. Anyway, uh, this, uh, these missiles... Whew! Okay. I managed to take them all out. <laughs> Did we get them? Not yet, sir. Depending on which missile hits you, will, uh, damage a particular, uh, party member. I believe the top right damages Peppy, the bottom right will damage, uh, Slippy. The... We'll 
see about that, Andros. <laughs> so am I, man. So am I. More than you'll ever know. <laughs> Seriously? Why were my bullets going straight through the frickin' evil bugger part? But anyway, uh... What makes this mission so frickin' difficult is the amount of enemies that are all on screen at once and so much that can go wrong. Okay. I really like the fact that Great Fox can come in and really deal some serious damage. <laughs> that is one aspect I really love about this mission. This is one of my favorite missions in the entire game, despite the difficulty. Oh boy. The last thing I need now is to frickin' die, especially when I'm so close to the end. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, we are quite crazy. What are you talking about? Hello, uh, Col Colodio. This one's different. We were so close to Venom. Whoa! Say hello to the ultimate space weapon, the Gorgon. In order to damage this thing, yeah. you need to first it destroy all three of the energy balls and then destroy the outer uh, perimeter. The outer perimeter are those uh, tentacle-like things that constantly are being swung at you. Once you take care of that, the saucer itself will start uh, shooting out missiles at you. So overall, I feel like this fight can be a really damn difficult one. Not so much uh, the missile part, but more so the tentacles and shooting the centerpiece. Once you uh, destroy all three energy balls, the shield in the center of the saucer will get weaker. Eventually, it will get to a point where you can start damaging the ship itself very, very quickly, and you can one-cycle it if you're fast enough. You have a good enough uh, trigger finger. Granted, my trigger finger is actually my index finger, but I'm sure my thumb will do just as well. We'll see, though. Only one way to find out. Uh-oh. This is bad. Watch out, Fox. Ow. Okay. By the way, that laser? I believe it was rainbow in the original game, but here it's just purely pink. Like Kirby. There we go. Enemy destroyed. Phew! Don't be afraid to throw in a Nova Bomb in there too to deal some extra damage. Also, have a having a really good uh, trigger thumb is also very, very useful and beneficial to have. Especially for a boss fight like this. There we go, folks. Mission accomplished. 12 lives to work with as we head into the final battle. Venom? On. We're entering Venom airspace. Time to head into Venom airspace and take the fight to Andros. This time, we're going through the back door. Here we go. Say your prayers, Andros. Don't get too cocky, Star Fox. Let's see how you handle our new ships. Too bad Dad's not here to see us fail. We'll 
make sure you never reach Andros. Hmm. We'll just see about that, Star Wolf. Anyway, uh, as soon as you get the Venom, Star Wolf will appear once again. This time with some extremely powerful and agile ships. It really helps to have uh, hyper lasers and. Also, be prepared to do lots and lots of somersaults. I'll take care of you. Somersaults and also U turns are going to be your best friend throughout the entirety of the, the Star Wolf segment of this mission. Also, get used to your teammates constantly asking for help. Too close. I won't let you get away from me. This particular fight can be really oh dang it. It can be really damn difficult to finish off all of Star Wolf because not only are their ships more powerful, but they also have a tendency to do lots of barrel rolls and deflect your own laser projectiles. Thankfully they can't bounce back and hit you and your teammates, thank god. Because that was a really annoying feature in uh, the original Star Fox. But hey, I'm just saying. Mm, we are getting pretty low on health, and I don't really like that, but. Uh, uh oh. Uh, this may end up taking me multiple attempts, which, uh. That's typically what happens whenever you're fighting against Star Wolf. Oh. Bye bye. <laughs> At least we got one of them taken out. As you take out more and more of Star Wolf, more the Wolf and Two ships, the fight does get easier, which is something to be thankful for. What's more is that the. Uh, for every uh, member of Star Wolf you take out, you will get some. Uh, you will get 50 points per kill, and that is excellent. <sighs> I really hate the fact that these guys. Well, okay, maybe not 50 points for every kill, but for most kills. There's one more to go. Only one ship left. Who's left? I believe it's Wolf. You also have to keep in mind that the environment can also be quite a bit of a pain in the butt. There are a lot of uh, pylons just hanging around and about, just being pillars, marking uh, Andross' territory, but still, they're pretty easy to evade. But the darkness definitely doesn't help things at all. Especially considering the fact that the darkness can uh, easily blend the pillars into the environment. And more times than not, no you're more than I likely going to end up colliding with one. I'll go it alone from here. Alright, time to head on in. What? Time to head in to Andros and face him once again. Fun fact, in the original game there was a bug where uh, if you position the R-Wing in just the right place, you can get soft-locked into a constant loop of flying around the entrance of, uh, of Andross' uh, hole here. But, I believe that has been uh, completely uh, eradicated in the 3DS remake. Are you sure about that, Andros? It's foolish to come against me. Now you will feel true pain. Hmm. By the way, when he says that, he truly means it. Like, he is ready. He has been waiting for you for the past 10,000 years to face you and completely murder you. This fight against Andros is definitely a lot harder than uh, 
the previous encounter for sure. By the way, if you shoot the eyes before taking out the hands, the the hands will rub against the eye, the eye of Andros. This gives you an opportunity to just simply uh, start hammering an attack against the hands, but upon uh, completing this animation, God damn it, I misfired the damn bomb. <laughs> uh, well, that's unfortunate. If Andros manages to... If he manages to destroy or... No. Are you kidding me? I was clearly far away from his face. That's just bullcrap. Well, this isn't gonna be good. <laughs> Thankfully, I did get an extra life out of uh, the back of the entrance, but still. This is definitely going to be really, really intense. <laughs> mm. Really do not like the fact that I'm... I've lost both of my wings due to the fact that Andros just plain ate me. <laughs> Whoa. I have the brains to rule, Lilat. So, Andros, you show your true form. Oh, man. Now the real fight against Andros begins. Although it may be over quick very, very quickly, due to the fact that, uh, I am low on health. Like, so low that I'm dead. God damn it. Unfortunately, if you do, uh, end up dying during the, uh, either the first or second phase of the Andros fight, you do have to recite the first part of Andros all over again. So, if you want to guarantee extra life for every encounter against Andros, as soon as you come across the first split path, head right, second split path, head left. You will get an extra life each and every time. So essentially, you have unlimited attempts at fighting Andros. Just be sure to grab the extra life, otherwise that would all be completely meaningless. It would be nice to have hyper lasers here, but no, I had to die like a freaking chum. Especially after that. Also, some of the attacks that Andros throws at you can be really, really powerful and deal a lot of freaking damage. Some of them are pretty damn difficult to dodge, too. On. Thank you. <sighs> Damn. Really sucks being stuck with just a single laser, but oh well. Can't really, uh... uh... Are you kidding me? That is just bullshit! Okay, so, uh, strategy. When it comes to this fight, don't go after the right hand first. Go after the left. Because apparently it's a lot easier to dodge on the left, on the right, than it is on the left. The left is a pure gamble. Mm -mm -mm. Wow, I'm practically dead again. Jesus, flip. Man, I suck at this fight. <laughs> I just freaking suck. I really wish I could, uh, just simply skip that part of the cutscene and even this, but sadly, no. Can't skip it. 
Okay, uh... As far as recommendations when it comes to fighting Andros is concerned... Don't do that! <laughs> God damn it! Hmm... Maybe I should try sliding to the left as soon as the fight begins. So that way I don't have to be constantly barraged by freaking eyeballs of death. <laughs> This boss fight right here definitely is the hardest part of the entire game. And rightfully so. This is the real Andross, after all. I mean, of course. Andross should be difficult. No matter if you're fighting the real Andross or the fake robotic one that's just lying in wait for you after going through the front door of Venom. Just saying. Hit the damn glove. Thank you. The thing about the shooting the eyes and the Andros shooting energy beams from his hands and stuff, it does uh, skip one of the attacks that you have to dodge, and that is God damn it. That is being sucked in like a freaking vacuum. Again, it seems like you can only do it when you're going to the right-hand side, not so much the left. I don't know why, but apparently that's how it is. So yes, the... It's definitely easier to... Uh, really, game?! I guess you have to shoot a Nova Bomb in his mouth, otherwise you will be sucked in, regardless of which arm you shoot out first, or which hand. If he does the sucky sucky, fire a bomb immediately in his mouth. If you don't have any bombs, well then you're kind of shit out of luck. You're gonna have to just say screw it and uh, <laughs> accept the fact that you're not gonna have any bombs and you're going in. <laughs> there may be a way to dodge it. There may be another way to dodge it, but I don't quite know what that could be. It could be a somersault, or it could be something else entirely, like hitting the brakes. Alright, let's try heading to the left this time. So, like I said, this fight can be really, really difficult, and it's definitely the hardest and most stressful part of the game. The first part here, what you have to do is destroy the eyes as they're swinging around Andross's brain. And these suckers not only can be pretty damn difficult to hit, but they are also really small targets, as expected, because, hello, they're freaking eyeballs. What also doesn't help is the fact that uh, they constantly spew uh, lines of energy so long as they are around and alive. So if you run into that, you will receive some damage. Thankfully, it's not much damage. It's like, it's kind of like running into an obstacle and just tapping it. But still... Sometimes the perspective can also be kind of uh, messed up on this thing. When it comes to maneuverability, holding down L or R to turn in one direction very quickly is definitely your best bet. It also helps to have both wings intact, but again, that's uh, a lot easier said than done, especially if you uh, lose them during the first phase of the fight. God damn it! Come on! Freaking die! 
seriously though, I really am not a fan of this 3DS analog stick. Especially when your hands start sweating, it is so much easier for your thumb to slip off and force you to miss a turn. Uh, did one of the eyeballs just suddenly die? Hmm. I don't know. Irrelevant. I'm dead. God damn it! This would be so much easier if I can get, uh, freaking, uh, twin lasers or hyper lasers, but no, no! Instead, I'm stuck with the freaking pea shooter that is just the single laser. Oh, man. In this fight. Why do you have to be so freaking hard, man? <laughs> I swear to God, it's harder in the, this version of the game as opposed to the original. Ugh, whatever. Screw this freaking game. Like I said, though, at least you get the basically unlimited attempts if you take the right path to reach Andros in the first place. I swear to God, it seems like sometimes my laser should simply go straight through Andross's hand. Maybe Andross has some uh, eye frames that I don't even know about. Who knows? Hmm. Too close. Seriously? Still not destroyed? How many shots does it take to shoot down a frickin' hand? Yeah, I swear to God, you do need Nova Bombs in order to bypass this uh, entire frickin' uh, the in Ugh, damn it, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. Being sucked in. Okay, this should go by a little more easily now that I have both of my wings intact. Hopefully I won't lose them immediately upon starting the fight. One thing I highly recommend you do first as soon as the fight starts, get some distance between you and Andros in the eyes. That way you can uh, fly back around and start attacking the eyes. Thankfully, they're pretty easy to spot due to the fact that uh, you have you can on yeah you constantly see uh, lines of energy being skewed between the brain and the eyeballs themselves. You definitely don't want the eyes to be behind you at any point. It's like you want to try to go behind the eyes and start shooting the crap out of them. Son of a bitch! Okay, one eye down. There we go. Now comes the fun part. Now it's time to fight and destroy Andross's brain! And this part of the fight can be really, really stressful due to the fact that uh, if you go within the bottom part of the brain to get caught in it, you're more than likely going to not only receive serious damage, but you're also going to be losing both of your wings. So, yeah. Be prepared and also don't be afraid to get some distance between you and Andross's brain. Use your boost to the best of their abilities. If you don't do this, then more than likely you're going to end up being killed. You could also use Nova Bombs too to help you out. Also, throughout the fight, as you're trying to destroy the brain, 
bits and pieces of uh, brain matter will start uh, spewing from Andros himself. <sighs> Be careful when the brain matter starts spewing from Andros. That can uh, come back and really hurt you. Also, it seems to me that the Andros gets faster as the fight goes on. Like, seriously, look how fast he is. Doing a somersault to get back behind him is not exactly a good idea. More likely than not, you're just going to end up crashing into him. Ah, <sighs> man, this fight. Well, that works. If Andros does end up teleporting to a different part of the arena, be prepared to do a U-turn. There are a couple of ways to get back behind Andros if he does end up playing the chasing game. And that is constantly boosts around. Not only that, but you can also... Combine the quick turn of the boost along with uh, holding either L or R to fly left or right, respectively. And eventually he will end up dying. It's one of those parts of the fights where it can drag on for quite a while if you are not fully prepared to fight him. I still don't like the fact that he only does the ha-ha-ha thing. If I go down, I'm taking you with me. Oh, man. That's not good. Well, shit. <laughs> We're dead. Don't ever give up, my son. Or are we? Father? Hmm, so now that Andros has been destroyed, the tunneling sequence now begins. This way, now, Fox. you must constantly be boosting in order to keep up with the ghost of James McCloud. If you end up taking the wrong path and go in the opposite corridor where uh, James McCloud flies through, you will go into an instant death trust. Oh shit. And if you die here like me, don't worry about it so much. Kinda sucks that I ended up dying at the end anyway, so <laughs> whatever. If you do end up dying, don't fret. Thankfully you don't have to redo the entire fight, thank god. You just go back to the beginning of this explosion sequence. So now you just have to make your grand escape all over again, which is okay, and totally fine by me. By the way, the paths that James McCloud takes is different for each and every playthrough, and each time you do this escape sequence. So, there's no uh, time where uh, James McCloud uh, goes the, down the same path all the time. But there we go. Finally, we made it. You've become so strong, Fox. Thanks, man. Hmm. I always wonder, though, is James McCloud truly dead, or is he somehow still alive out there? The games basically tell you, hey, James is dead, but James finds a way to come back. A lot. Like, all the time. What's wrong, Fox? Nothing. Nothing's wrong. 
Hmm, I just noticed there was a slight lack of detail within uh, Fox's animation. Because in the original, he just shook his head when he replied nothing. Nothing's wrong. But in this version, his head just stays the same. So what the hell's up with that? Hmm, I don't know. But anyway, now that that's done, it's time to bring this game to a close. I did not mean to skip the freaking credit sequence. Oops. <laughs> well then, um, I'm going to have to edit in the credits myself or just download a video of the credit sequence online or something to that extent. I honestly did not mean to hit skip. I really didn't. I could just uh, go back and uh, do it myself all over again and just record it that way. But, still, I feel dumb for doing that. It was just an accidental slip. This is one steep bill, but it's worth it. Indeed it is. Uh, scored 1,049 hits, which is awesome. Very nice to see. And I'm pretty sure General Pepper does have some different reactions based on the score that you achieved. But... For whatever reason, we still got the same quote as last time. So, here we go. Mm-hmm. Sure, Peppy. <laughs> Whether you complete the game or get a game over, um, Peppy will uh, share with you some hints and some tips about how to better play the game. So, there. There you go. I really wish there was a way for me to just replay the credit sequence without me having to go into the editing phase. But, <laughs> oops. Due to me slipping up and accidentally hitting skip on the freaking bottom screen, <clears throat> I have to edit in the credits myself. As soon as we finish today's stream. So, <laughs> that kind of sucks. Oh well. Anyway, um... Now that the main game is done, let's show off Battle Mode and see what's so different about this uh, version of the game. There are two ways to play, either local multiplayer via download play or single player. You can battle against, uh, against three computer rivals or play against your friends via download local play. I'm going to be doing single player because I have no one else to play with and uh, yeah, that's really about it. So, regardless if you, uh, regardless if, uh, you, uh, changed the controls or not previously within the, within the main menu, it does give you another opportunity to readjust the controls again if you want to. So, I'm just gonna keep what I have here. Um, skip. No, I do not wish to enable gyro controls, thank you. In the multiplayer mode, there are three different modes you can play. Survival, point battle, and time battle. Survival is the compete to be the last pilot flying. flying. If multiple pirate pilots are left when time runs out, the battle will go into overtime. So it's kind of like a death match, or a free-for-all, to be more accurate. The first team, the, the first person to wipe out all opposing uh, fighters wins. As far as point battle is concerned, you uh, score points by destroying your rivals. First pilot to reach a set number of points is the winner. Time battle. Score points by destroying your rivals. The pilot with the most points when time runs out wins. So, yeah, it's kind of like survival, except uh, you have unlimited lives. So let's show off survival first. Within the multiplayer menu, you can uh, make adjustments to any settings that are displayed here. You can change the time limit, items from a. Uh, you can change the items from like classic to power ups, which is pretty cool. So if you are kind of bored of seeing uh, items that you've seen in the main game. You can change this to uh, classic items plus 
power-ups. So that's pretty cool. You can also adjust the, co the computer difficulty here as well, if you're playing single player. You can choose between normal, advanced, and expert. And this applies to all computer players. Stage, you, you can uh, change whatever stage you want to play on. So there's Macbeth, Metro, Corneria, Venom, and Random, which is uh, <laughs> a couple of... Uh, any of these uh, four stages. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Four stages. Player icons, you can uh, change this to always show or just when there are characters nearby. I'm gonna keep this at always. Shield gauge, you can adjust the size of the shield gauge from uh... Oops, I did not mean to do that. Well, uh, shoot on the boot. Um, I think I can, uh, simply, uh, turn... I can just simply, uh, readjust battle settings and exit. Yep, just like that. I hate it when I accidentally hit things on the bottom screen I didn't mean to hit. Anyway, the shield gauge. You can change between normal, small, and large. So... I think this only applies to you, though. So, if you want to give yourself an extra challenge, you're free to do that. Or if you want to make things easier on yourself, you can do that too. I'm going to keep my shield gauge at normal, and let's look at the control settings. Okay, this is just the uh, control settings from before. And, again, it gives you the option to turn on gyro controls if you want. But, for the most part though, everything's going to stay the same. Let's go! First stage, Macbeth. Let's see what we can do here. So here we go. It's time for some good old fashioned, good old fashioned multiplayer brawl in action. Again, I'm not really going to be focusing on uh, whether I win or lose. It would be nice if I could win, but again, that's just a. Uh, one of those things where, uh, if I win, great. If I don't, then I don't. The computer players themselves, even on normal difficulty, uh, can be really damn difficult. Ow! Holy crap! Apparently, in, uh, multiplayer mode, I didn't even know about this, but if you lose one of your wings, you can't barrel roll anymore. So why is that? I have no freaking clue. Damn it, Slip. Why you have to be so freaking good? Granted, you are the mechanic and everything. That does make sense, but still, still dumb. Oh, wow. It's over already? Well, damn. Awesome. <laughs> well, that's the first win of the multiplayer, so that's awesome. I don't know if there's a... I don't know if there are any unlockables as far as multiplayer content is concerned. Not like the original game, which actually did have some unlockables, based on uh, your performance in the main game. If you manage to score all the medals during the main game, then you will get, uh, you'll get, hang on, I believe in, uh, the original game, if you beat the game in, uh, or more or less complete all the levels in the main game in the original, then you will get an opportunity to play as the Landmaster or the R-Wing at the beginning of any multiplayer battle. However, if you score a medal, for every map during the main game in the original, then you would uh, get access to what I believe to be expert mode, which is essentially the main game, but harder. Plus, Fox wears uh, his father's sunglasses, 
And what makes it so much harder is that any hit on your wings will instantly destroy them. So even breathing on them the wrong way, <laughs> they will, they will, they'll blow up. And I believe you also take double damage in expert mode. I could be wrong on that too. But if you do manage to go above and beyond and get all the medals again on all the maps during uh, expert mode, then you also get one more uh, multiplayer unlockable, and that is the ability to run around on foot. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. As far as this version of the game is concerned, I'm not too sure how that's supposed to work. Anyway, let's go for point battle. First to three will win, and let's go to Metro. Sounds like a good idea. Let's go. Alright, here we go. The nice thing about uh, playing against computer players is, or I think any, if you're playing multiplayer in general, then for whatever reason, it seems to me that uh, if you uh, enable the ability to view the name tags of all the characters, then you will know exactly where they are at all times. Even the radar tells you exactly where they are. So that's pretty cool. Also, lock on laser. OP. Please nerf. <laughs> JK. By the way, if you go out to the edges of the map, instead of performing a really, really long U-turn, you'll instead do a very, very quick U-turn. Oh my god! Get the hell off of me! God damn it! Thankfully, upon uh, respawning, you will spawn back in immediately. <laughs> you also receive uh, damage indicators if you are currently being damaged in any way. God damn it! Well, that sucked. <laughs> I think if you play uh, with the uh, friends, this is where uh, things can really get intense. But again, it just seems to me that uh, it playing against computer players is nowhere near as fun as playing with friends. That's for sure. Hmm. All right, let's do timed battle next and show off Corneria. Settings are going to be the same, and we're going to go with a three-minute time limit because that's as low as we can go. And let's do this. I am kind of disappointed that the textures when it comes to the multiplayer maps don't look anywhere near as good as the main game, which is really, really dumb. I don't know why that is, but oh well. <laughs> Wing repair, not that I really needed it, but <laughs> still nice to have. Also, the U-turn that you can uh, pull off in this mode is a lot quicker than the main game, too, for whatever reason. I think it also takes slightly longer for your boost gauge to be fully restored as opposed to the main game, too. I could be wrong on that. Also, it is possible to steal your opponent's kills, so any kills that the... Any kills that the opponent lands, or you... Oh, dang it, I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. What I'm trying to say is... If you damaged an enemy and dealt like 99% of their 
on the damage. If the, an, another opponent swoops in and steals the kill from you, they get full credit, while you get absolutely nothing out of it. Also, there are no invincibility frames in multiplayer, which makes sense because, well, of course, <laughs> that would be completely unfair. Also, why the hell can't I shoot anyone? It seems like no matter how much damage I deal, my kills always get stolen. Honestly, I feel like I'm... Yeah, I'm not a fan of this mode. <laughs> I feel like this was a lot more fun in the original game, because at least you knew, uh... At least you knew what the hell it is you're supposed to be doing. Also, it seems to me that, uh damn quirkiness of uh, Star Fox, the original Star Fox with the barrel roll not working properly, also carried over to multiplayer. Thankfully this was not a problem in the, in the actual uh, main game, but still, why does this have to be such a big pain in the ass? Better than, better to get one point as opposed to none at all, which is really, really stupid. Seriously, screw this damn game mode. <laughs> damn it, that sucked. Alright, there's only one map left to show off, and, uh, well, there's no other game modes that there's left to play, so, uh, only one thing left. To do and that is we're going we're going back to survival this time we're heading to venom huh, that's neat you can also use the d-pad to execute somersaults and u-turns push up on the d-pad to execute a somersault down on the d-pad executes a u-turn By the way, I don't know uh, how high your laser upgrade can get in uh, this mode. I feel like twin lasers is the best upgrade you can get. Also, I didn't even realize I lost one of my wings already after getting frickin' molested by Falco. And I believe once you are out for the round, then you have no choice but to spectate the other players. Same old bitch. Again, I just can't really find anyone. They always know where I'm at. God, it's like playing freaking Call of Duty all over again. Wait, what? I didn't even kill anyone, and yet I win. I don't get it. I honestly don't get it, but whatever. <laughs> Yeah, the multiplayer is just not, not that good. It honestly isn't. At least, uh, playing it solo. But, other than that, there's really one thing left to show off here. That is the training mode. Let's head on in and get started. Welcome to training mode. Let's practice the basics. Mm, sounds good to me. Use the circle pad to steer. Hmm. To ascend, slide the circle pad down. To descend, slide the circle pad up. Why do you have such a weird, sexy voice? What the hell's up with that? In the original game, he didn't even have a voice at all. Also, this is basically telling you how you can uh, use the gyro controls. Basically, you get a lecture on uh, how the gyro controls work, and you can use the gyro controls in combination of the circle pad, which is the analog stick, and you can really execute some quick and impressive turns without having to hold either the shoulder, to, either of the shoulder buttons. But again, for me, um, there's really no need for me to use gyro controls at all. 
No, thank you. I do not wish to use gyro controls. I'm perfectly Hold happy with the other button controls. While turning to move left or right quickly. Press the L or R button twice to do a barrel roll. It repels enemy fire. <laughs> I don't think that the Press dialogue the was even in the bomb. original game. Press the Y button again to detonate it. Or you can lock onto an enemy and fire a bomb that Press way. Press the A button to fire your laser. Hold the A button if you want to charge it. There are 100 rings that you can fly through during the training mode. Again to fire and Just like with the original game. Except the uh, training mode here looks a lot different as opposed to... You can to, also uh, lock on to enemies when charging your laser. If you destroy multiple enemies at once, you will have bonus points. Mm -hmm. When locked on to an enemy, you can even launch bombs. So not only did the training mode get like a music change, just like with every other track in the game, it also got an aesthetic change too, making it dramatic, look dramatically different. As opposed to the original, which was like a gray background, now this is more like a digital space, which makes more sense because it's training mode and the uh, hyper lasers are more powerful than twins. Collecting a wing repair item will fix your wings. By the way, in order to spawn a wing repair item, now let's practice you have to have boost. one or both of your wings missing completely. Press the X button to boost. Press the B button to break. So, uh, as I was trying to say, dang it, I don't even effect. remember what I was trying to say anymore. I hate that! Damn brain part of the, the game. the meter is red, no techniques will work. Okay, thanks, game. Oh, to yeah. Do a somersault, slide the circle pad down and boost at the same time. Or do it in sequence, that also works very well. I don't know if the D-pad can also be used to somersault or not in the, either the main game or training mode. Okay, yes it can. There's a lot of wing repair items here. I wonder why that is. Why are there so many of those things? It's not like we're going to be crashing into everything in sight. To receive incoming messages, tap that touch. This is Rob 64. Oh, damn it. Keep up the good work. Missed one of the damn rings. F figures right at the end of the damn training course, too. There are 100 rings, and if you manage to go through all 100 rings, Rob will say, Great, now let's get back to the game. Now moving to all range mode. And once you complete the ring course, you will go into an all you can range fly mode anywhere section. anywhere in all range mode. Here you will learn all about all the range mode and on the how radar it works. Shows you position. So that's pretty cool. You will learn uh, basically how the, the mechanics the map, and all work when it comes to all turn. range mode, as well as uh, how your radar indicates Press what enemies are where, and it also uh, repeats any and all uh, tutorials all that you previously had had uh, encountered before. So to do a if you uh, miss something. This also tells you how to execute the U-turn during all range mode. Too. Remember, U-turns only work in all range mode. Press the X button to boost. All right, I think we're done here for training mode, so let's go ahead and quit training and quit. New to this version of the game, if you would uh, like, you can complete your training in quotations by doing a trial run. The trial run is completely optional. Otherwise, you can just start up the main game like nothing's happened. So, let's do it. Let's show off the trial run. So, here's how the trial run works. 
you'll lose a star if you hit an obstacle. If you lose all your stars, you'll fail the trial run. You only get three stars, and you just gotta do your best to finish the course the best that you can. This trial run only exists in the 3DS remake of this game. So, if you uh, want to put your skills to the test, feel free to come here and do a trial run. So overall, I feel like the trial run itself does give you the opportunity to really showcase your skills and just uh, put them to the test before you start heading out to the game. I like this addition. This will uh, basically tell you, hey, uh, are you really ready to take on the game itself and what it has to offer? Trust me, it's not going to be easy. Especially the later parts of the game. Holy crap. And again, that Andross fight was just something else, I tell ya. I'm not sure if you get anything for doing this perfectly, but we just did. There we go! Trial run complete! I think as long as you have at least one star, then the trial run is considered a success. If you manage to hold on to all three, you don't get any sort of reward or anything, which is kind of a shame, but oh well, what can you do? So, like I said earlier, um, I am going to be inserting the credit roll, and I'm going to have to do it during the editing phase of the stream here. I'm going to have to go all the way back through the entire game all over again which is really really dumb <laughs> oh, god damn it i hate the fact that i did that stupid thing but anyway when it comes to the game itself the 3ds remake of Star Fox 64 is definitely an improvement and i do like this version of the game personally i find it to be as good as the original may not be the may not be considered the definitive edition of the game but it's still an excellent game regardless the multiplayer may have received a bit of a downgrade compared to the original game but it's still a really fun time especially with friends if you can get a bunch of friends together and they all have a copy of Star Fox 64 3D you and f three others can uh, really have a hell of a party and have a great show. <laughs> Granted, it will get old after a while, but multiplayer is just more so an afterthought if anything else. But, again, that's the game. That's uh, Star Fox 64 3D. That's uh, basically everything that this game has to offer. That is absolutely everything that uh, I can possibly show off when it comes to this game. There may be an expert mode that's also included in this version of the game too. And I'm pretty sure the requirements to unlocking expert mode are the same as it was in the original. Get all medals on all planets. And I believe you have to do it on, with both the N64 control scheme as well as the gyro control scheme. So, essentially you have to complete the game more than twice. Like, multiple times through. So, yeah. That's not really something I'm going to be doing. But, it is something that uh, completionists out there can do. As like a little extra thing that they can choose to do. Since uh, we're only about an hour and 45 minutes into the stream, there's still a... Uh, um, I really don't think I'm going to be doing any sort of bonus streams here today because I still got to re-record the whole credit sequence. I got to be sure that the, you know, uh, slobs will record the last part that I mistakenly skipped like a freaking chump, but whatever anyway uh 
For now, though, I am finished here. I may throw together uh, one more video today, one more regular video, and upload that to YouTube later, but I'm not really too sure. Regardless, though, we're done with Star Fox 64 3D. This is General Snivy with said game. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you were able to attend the live stream live, thank you for attending. And next time, it's going to be yet another new game, as far as what game that's going to be. Um, I'm thinking about doing something a little more risque. A bit, uh, it's going to be a bit of a biohazard, and not the seventh one in the series. But, even so... <laughs> Hope you are all looking forward to what I have in store next, which will be starting next weekend. So once again, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed, and I will see you all later. Enjoy the credits of the game, and I will see you all next time. Star Fox, we are in your debt. I would be honored to have you as part of the Cornerian army. Oh no, sir. We prefer doing things our own way. Great Fox is ready to go. It's time for us to go now. <laughs> <laughs>